interpolation means that you want to find a certain position, let's say point 2, between two observation points. So point 2 is something you did not observe, but you want to find it. We're going to show this, how to do this with formulas and with VBA. Let's start with formulas first. We want to find this position. So we want to also locate the one, the observation just before it and just after it. We do that with the index function that looks in the range of data. And then it has to find a row position and a column position. The row position in this case is point 18 that is somewhere here. That is row 11 in the range. So we do that with the match function. We want to find E1, which is point 2, the value we want to find to locate, in range A2 through A16, that is the row position, comma, the column position is 1, and the index function wants to find the previous value, closest previous value in the range, point 18, for there is no position for point 2 here. We do something similar for the y position, but in this case the formula is exactly the same, but the column position, that's the last argument for index, is comma 2. We want to find it in the second column. The one after it is now very simple. All you have to do is find the before one and add plus 1. And you want to find that value in column 1. And then you do the same in column 2 plus 1 for the match. Once you have that information, you want to find this insert. That insert is based on three pairs of coordinates. So the first one is 0. In this case I use the min function, in case you have values that do not start at 0. And the last one is also the min function, but now in column B min function. And then we have to find the in-between values. This one is definitely based on E1, that's the value you want to locate, and this one is the same. But here we need the trend function. We want, based on a linear trend line, the position between this observation point and that observation point. The trend function does that. It's, it wants to know, let me show you, what are the known y's, these two guys, the known x's, and the new x is e1. And this one is the same. And then you will get this line. That's how you can do it with functions. You can also do it with VBA. I did that on a different sheet. It looks the same. But this time we are going to say to Visual Basic, each time the user changes this value in E1, we automatically want to put these values in there and calculate them. There are no formulas in there this time. So it is done hard-coded. So we go to Visual Basic, Alt F11, and make sure that you have this Project Explorer on. The Project Explorer is here. If, if it's not there, you have to click it on through there. And you want to make sure that on Sheet 1, double click on Sheet 1, that you have a subroutine. And that subroutine is based on the worksheet change event. Whenever the user changes something in there, this event will kick in. We declare variables. If the user is not in E1, then exit the sub. That, that means the change event did not take place in E1. Otherwise, we are going to do a lot of calculations. We set O range to the range starting in cells row 2, column 1, that is A2, through range A1 up to current region rows count. The current region is the entire little table in column A and B, comma 2. 
If range E1 is greater than equal to the max, then exit the sub. That means we cannot do extrapolation outside the range of observations. We happen to merge cell E1 and F1. Then we calculate what a V match is by using the worksheet function match, like I showed you before with real functions and formulas. And I think this speaks for itself now. Then we calculate the index value by using the index function based on the vmatch function, that is the, the row position, colon, and we put in range A2 the value of v index. Then we recalculate v index, this time for column 2, and we put that in range F2. Then we do something similar for the, the third cell, match plus 1, and again, match plus 1, but now in column 2. Then we put the min value in there by using the min function. Then we put in range E6 and range E7 the values. Then we calculate the trend by using the trend function, which I explained earlier. I think that speaks for itself now. Put the values in in the cells that need that value and then we calculate the min value in the second column. I will just run this one to show you that it works and then we are going to follow the curve but I will use the first sheet but you could also do it on the second sheet with a macro called scrolling which I will show you soon. I'm going now to the second sheet and each time I change something in here let's say 0.25 and it will go to 0.25 by just changing the value and the change event kicks in at the moment I enter. If you want to know how to create this chart with VBA I'm not going to explain that here. You go to my book you can find that at genesispc.com forward slash cdlist.com HTM. I, I want to show you one more thing. I created a macro by inserting a module and I happen to call that sub scrolling. I declare two variables. I don't even need that, that second one. We make sure that we are on sheet 2 which is the interpolation with formulas. We put as a starting value in there 0 0.05 and then we do a do loop. Do loop while range E1 is less than 0 0.45. If you go past that point there is no next cell anymore in your observed values. And then we add each time in the loop 0 0.05 to the value in range E1 but then we put a delay in there with a timer. The timer gives you the, the number of seconds since midnight. So I store in P time the value of timer plus 1. Do until the timer itself, seconds since midnight, is greater than P time. Do events, that means keep doing other things if you have to, but wait during that process and loop while the range is there. So I made a shortcut to that one. So when I go to that first sheet and I do Control shift s it will start at the first position and it scrolls through it until it reaches the max value. I, I want to make sure that you feel very comfortable with all these things. Um, I consider them a kind of simulations. I wrote two books. One book is simulations based on formulas and functions without VBA. The other one has VBA, so that gives you much more power as you realize now. You can find them here. I, I would recommend though that you buy the book and not e-books or Kindle versions where you want to see both pages at the same time. And every simulation is done on two facing pages. The left one explains it and the right one has the code or the formulas. Good luck!